This is our second to last year in Maseches Makes, and possibly the second to last year given by me in this framework. Ooh. Right, get your tissues ready. Yeah, everyone crying. Okay, let's behave ourselves. Now we are talking about mitzvot. How can a person be zoichit or Yeah, in uh, in eleven easy steps, or not so easy. What's a quicker way to gain Olam Abba after 120? Basically, Chavdal de Mudalef, Yishur de Nishma, Savimayam Lach Merkiva, Lefuas, Trina Chabas Gula Rochel, Chanabas Sima, Sershah Cholesol. Bad Dobi de Midon Alachas Esre, which means Chavdal de Mudalef, third line. We know that there are 613 mitzvahs because we just learned it. The Torah tells us that if we want to gain Chai Olam Abo, you want to come to Olam Abo, you want to gain eternal life, you need to follow and to perform 630 mitzvahs and refrain. Some of them are loita said, you have to keep away from. Now, David the Melech came. David the Melech looks as if he minimized, as if he basically you know, shrunk the mitzvahs. Instead, really, there are only 11 mitzvahs you have to keep. Now, this is obviously very, very hard to understand because we don't believe in the Torah changing, right? So the pshat is, says the Rivan, it says that it's hard for people, as we have Yerida Sadoros, we all know generations go down. As, and as we go down with the generations, we have an issue of weaker, it's a weaker generation. So you can't be Mikhaim all 613 mitzvahs came over the Melech and said, if you keep for those 11, if you keep to those 11 concepts, dogmas, then you're going to get Olam Abba. The Marsha says something else. Marsha says something which I could relate to very much. There's the Marsha. Nobody is diminishing the mitzvahs here, obviously. Marsha says, really, what it means is that you can't, if you want to get Olam Abba, and you need that to meet the quote of 613, that's impossible. Why? Because, well, first of all, you don't have Beis HaMikdash. You have a lot of temples around the world, unfortunately, who don't have Beis HaMikdash, right? So we don't have Beis HaMikdash. Some people don't live in Eretz Yisrael, so they can't become a Tzitzit Baret. Some people are not women, so they can't go to Mikveh. And some people are not men, so they can't put on filling. Some people are Koyhanim, some are Israelim. You can't really keep to the whole thing. So if you want to gain the whole of Taryag, you're in trouble, unless you're everything together, which you can't be caught in Levi men and women together. No such thing, and living everywhere in the world in one go. Yeah. So therefore came David the Melech and said, there are 13 concepts that any Jew at any time, regardless of his gender, location, or ability, yeah, there are those 11 things that everybody can keep to. Everyone can perform, everyone can adhere to these 11 moral concepts, and therefore reach Olam Abba without all the small detail of the Tariq mitzvahs. Of course, it does mean chat v'sholem, you don't have to keep the mitzvahs, you can. If you happen to be a man living in Eretz Yisrael, you put on filling, and you take Meiser, and if you live in Beis HaMikdash times, v'chule v'chule. Let's see. Ba'dobet b'mina l'chasese, dikhtiv. Yeah? This is now quoting from Tehillim, Tehillim, right over here. Tehillim Tesvob. Mizvola Dovid. Hashem, mi yagur be'olecho, mi yishkon be'har kodshecho. In other words, who is going to gain his share in Olam Haba? Yeah. Tomim. We're going to see now 11 different qualities, moral qualities and mitzvahs that can be done anywhere, everywhere. And we're going to enumerate them, elaborate on them one by one. Right now, we're just reading and translating. Oilech Tomim is the person who walks between us in a way that is uncomplicated with Hashem. He's not complicated with Hashem. He follows what Hashem says without you know, questioning, Upoil, Sedek, the one who is a good worker, or he works in a just, in, in a just way, the Dover Emes Bilvovoi, the one who speaks truth in his heart, Loyogal al Leshoinoi, he guards his mouth, Rogal is Lechilus, Loshon Hora, but we're going to see it's also Shkori, lies, yeah, his tongue is clean, Loyosa Loreo, he doesn't do anything bad to his friend, the Herpo Loynoso al Koivoi, and he does not bear the shame of his relative. He cares about his relatives, and if his relatives are in shame, he does something about it. 
Nivza Be'enov Nimas, the one that is hated by Hashem is also hated by him. He hates those who hate Hashem. Vesire Hashem Yechaded, those that fear Hashem, he respects them. Yeah, he has all, he has, he gives respect, gives respect to those who fear Hashem. Nish Balhora Beloyamil, he swears to do bad. It does mean to do bad. Nish Balhora means he swears not to do something, to refrain from something, and it doesn't change the oath, the Shvua. Soon you're going to do Shvuas. Kaspolonos and Beneshech, he does not put his money in ribis, yeah, doesn't have interest business with forbidden ribis. He does not take shoychad, he doesn't take bribe, he doesn't believe in taking bribe in order to yeah, harm the clean, good person. I don't know if you counted, but we have 11 things here. The one who does all those, seemingly, he's never going to fall. He will never fall, not in this world, not in the world to come. He is, if he ticked those yeah, he checked those 11 boxes, he's a good guy. So even though he can't perform all the mitzvahs, as long as he can do all those, which can be done everywhere, anywhere, by anybody, the very general ideas, if you stick to those, you're in a very good place. Now, the Gemara will give us examples of Jewish people throughout Jewish history. Each one, yeah, fits one of those descriptions. Commercials? Okay, now the Gemara Explain one by one. Avram Avinu. That's the basis for everybody. He's the father of all of us. He's the father of Emuna, and he's Olech Tomim. His mind was Emuna Betmimus with simplicity. Hashem told him, "Walk ahead of me, so to speak, and you be Tomim. Be uncomplicated. Be simple." Avram Avinu was a genius, and yet when it came to Emuna, he wasn't playing games. He wasn't a shtickmacher. He knew whatever Hashem brings me is good. Poel Tzedek, what's Poel Tzedek, the one who works in a just way? You're going Abba Chilkiyo. Abba Chilkiyo is not mentioned here in the Gemara. Abba Chilkiyo is a whole story, very interesting story, in uh, Maseches um, Tainis, Daf Gimel, I think, of Dalet. And it says over there, Abba Chilkiyo was such a tzaddik that whenever they wanted uh, rain, and they knew that they really, really need rain, what did they do? No problem. You go to Abba Chilkiyo, he davens, and rain comes. It's that simple. Why was Abba Chilkiyo such a big tzaddik? So there's a whole business there. There's a story about the Chochomim who went to Abba Chilkiyo. I'm not going to details. They saw him in the field. They said hello. He didn't answer. He did a lot of things that looked somewhere between strange and even uh, even um, obnoxious. And then they got, so it seemed outwardly. He came to his house. His wife came to greet him, and she was all made up. Nice shaitl, nice makeup. Yeah, of course, such a tzaddik. His wife should look like a shmata, right? That's what we think with a <laughs> cover. And then they went to his house. He let his wife go first, then him, then the guests. He did all kinds of funny things. Him and his wife davened in the attic, yeah? And then rain, rain came. The Maisa, the story of Abba Chilkyo, two things showed that he's a poil tzaddik. First of all, he was working in the field. And when he was working in the field, they said hello. He didn't answer. Why? Because it was the middle of work. And if he's working for someone else, I'm not sure the case was it was for someone else, but he, his work ethics was very, very, very strong. So he wouldn't talk at all during work. He would just concentrate at work. And also, when he came home, he would feed his children. There was one special way he fed the children. He gave big thing to this one and a small one to the other one. So Poyal Tzedek is a person who has, is, who has high work ethics and also feeds his children. That alone is a mitzvah. To know how to sustain your family is a mitzvah. Think you're doing a mitzvah when you sustain your family. And there were two of the madness of Abba Chilkiyo. Why was his wife so made up? Why didn't she look like a shmata, like some people think it is the right way? So, so they said, why? And he said, she wants to keep me from looking to other women. Women have to look nice and pretty for the husbands. And women who look like a shmata are, are doing a crime, project a crime. Because uh, the husband can look at other women if his wife doesn't look pleasing to him. Weiter. The Dover MS Bilvovoi, what's Dover MS Bilvovoi? He speaks truth in his heart. Kigoin of Safra, story number two of Safra. Of Safra was in the middle of St. Krishna, 
he was in the first parsha, even second parsha. A guy came to him, and he knew Rav Safra once has something for sale. Rav Safra advertised online something for sale. Yeah, maybe it was online. I'm not sure. Rav Safra advertised he wants to sell something, or maybe he was in the middle of the process already. But the guy approached the middle of the evening, asking, "No, how much do you, uh, how much do you?" Uh, want for your uh, motorcycle, for whatever that is. And Rav Safra did not answer. It was in the middle of Krishna. The guy didn't realize, the potential buyer didn't realize that it was because he was in the middle of Krishna. He thought that he's not responding because he wants a higher price. So let's say the beginning, the, 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 the start of price was 100. The guy said 200, 300, 400. He was willing to give more. Rav Safra finished Krishna. Rav Safra could have easily asked him for, let's say, 400, because the guy's willing to give it. But because Rav Safra originally wanted 100, the only reason why he did not continue the deal was because of not saying Krishna. So Rav Safra is super honest. He wouldn't be even dishonest. Rav Safra was uber, yeah, over the top honest and actually asked for the original price, right? And not the, that's Dover Mes Bilvavai. You get to the level of emes when you really, really emes big and you don't change even inside your heart what you originally wanted to say. That darga gets you to oil and mabah. Biter. Lo al al. Excuse me. Lo al al shoynoi. The Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu did not speak bad, meaning, dichtiv, ulai yimusheni avi v'hisi beinov ke metahatea. Yaakov Avinu told his mother, Mother, what, what are we going to do? Yeah, you're telling me to say that I'm Esav, but if I go there and I, my father will feel me, yeah, he'll see that I am smooth and not hairy, yeah, then I'll be a metate, I'll be a liar in his eyes. Meaning, Yaakov Avinu really, really, really did not want to do what his mother told him to do. Says the Ma'al Shah, Yaakov Avinu did not want to lie. Yaakov Avinu is a pillar of truth. Why did he end up lying? Because his mother commanded him. And she knew that was the right thing to do. She knew that it, you have to lie because you have no other choice. The Masha says something beautiful. I was wondering, why does it say lo rogal? Rogal is loshen rechilus, loshen hora. All right? Yaakov, we see that his Nisoyan was emes and shekel, not loshen hora. Says the Masha, beautiful. How could they have avoided this whole business of lying to Yitzchok? They could have told him, right? Rivko and Yaakov could have come to Yitzchok and say, listen, daddy, he's, he's fake. The guy's fake. He's giving you food and asking you halachic questions. He's a Rosha. He broke five of in one day. He killed the Ashes Ish of the Zohar. He did all the bad things in the book. Why didn't they say that? Because Yaakov did not want to speak Lashon Hora about his brother. Yaakov did not want to besmirch his, his, his brother and ruin the good relationship between his brother and his father he wanted Yitzchak to maintain that good relationship with Yitzchak. It would be better to lie and go behind his back of Yitzchak rather than saying Lashon Hora. Ad Kedekach. That was the unbelievable mind of Yitz of Yaakov, who did not want to speak badly of his brother, neither did he want to lie, but he was forced to lie, because that's what the mother said. She knew how to lie, and she she channeled it the right way. She learned it from Lovon, and she channeled it the good way. She knew how to use bad things for a good purpose. Like you have to serve Hashem with your Yitzhar Hora. Weiter. Next, please. He did not do any bad thing to his friend. He does not uh, compete in an unfair way with his friend's business. His friend opened a sweet shop. He does not open another sweet shop two, two, you know, two doors, you know, two doors down the block. He doesn't open, he doesn't do unfair competition. The marshal here says something. <laughs> I don't know. He says, what does that mean? That he should sit somewhere. <laughs> doesn't mean he should learn Torah as much as he can. Learn Torah. Dedicate your life to Torah. Why? Because he says, when you're in business, it's very common that you compete too much. It's very much of a chashash, yeah? That you're coming to really, you know, uh, uh, basically, yeah, uh, uh, infringe on your friend's uh, uh, business. Of course, you can do business the kosher way. But it's likely you'll get into a mess. Mashaken, the only business you're allowed to compete is what a school. It says, let's say one guy opened a school and there's another school opening next door. No problem. As long as schools are good and they teach the kinder of the the more the better. If I'm a shoemaker, I can't open another shoemaker next to my friend, right? Or uh, whatever that is. What? That's how good school. Exactly. Mashaken by Torah, the more the merrier. Have another kailal, another thing. Either compete. Good, they should compete. 
So it says learning, when you're learning, you know for sure you are clean. Yeah, you're definitely a sogus gvul free when you did dedicate your life to learning. Okay. Yes. Okay. Obviously, I said if it's done unkosher, competition is healthy, not always. Depends. It's healthy if it's done within the limitations of Aloha. If you have competition against Aloha, it's wrong. Some people ruin their friends' lives by competition that's done the wrong way. You have to ask her off, you have to ask Hosh and Mish, but before you move, before you start any business. And if it creates competition, it's also Again, just, uh, yeah. Weiter. I'm saying if it's unfair, then, yeah. Weiter. Also, we said, he does not bear the shame of his relative. What does it mean? Which means a person sees that his relative needs help, needs chizuk and ruchnis and gashmis, is makar of him. Yeah, he, make, he brings him closer, finds him a business, opens a store for him, uh, teaches him Torah, smiles to him. Yeah, your relatives need you more than you realize. Sometimes it's nephews, sometimes it's cousins, call she can your own children. I'm not speaking even on the kibbutz of him, that's for sure. Nibza bein of Nimas, he hates those who hate Hashem, who are hated by Hashem. Zeh Chizkiah Melech. This relates to Chizkiah Melech, that Chizkiah Melech's father was a very, very big Rosho, right? Achaz, Achaz was his father, Baruch Hashem. Shegira Atzmes Ovid Vemitra Shel Chavolim. Yeah, it's written in Brochus, in Psochim. Yeah, he basically, after his father died, he didn't give him a very nice Leviah. He dragged the bones of his father yeah, with like some kind of not, not very respectable, respectable bed made out of ropes. In other words, he dragged his bones. Why did you do that to his father? His father, Ochaz, was a very, very big Rosh, a very big over of the Zorah. Not only that, the Marsha says, don't think he was a bad son. There was a kapara for his father. And by the way, his cow did six things. Three of them Chachomim agreed, and three they did not agree. These are this is one of the things Chachomim did agree with. Chachomim said, "Good, Lamai said it's a kapar for him. Yeah, it's like you know uh, dragging on the floor and the vans that for him it's a kapar. Maybe not on Babo, he's not going to get that much of a punishment." Yeah, he respects. Yeah, he gives kavod. He honors. He glorifies even the Yir Hashem. Who is that? The Yehoshaphat Melech Yehuda. What did Yashofat Melch Yehuda do? She Chochem. When he would see Talmud Chochem, he would stand up from his throne, the, the royal throne. He would kiss him and he would hug him and kiss him. The Koreloi, Avi Avi, Rabbi Rabbi, Mari Mari. Yeah, oh, my Rebbe, my Rebbe, my Master, my Master, or even my Father. The Masha says something very, very, very nice. Masha says he was such a lover of Talmud Chachomim, right? But Lamaisa, he has a conflict. What's a conflict? A Melech is the only one that's not allowed to be Moichal al Kvoido. The Gemara in Kiddushin, Lamed Gimel Berch, it says, Melech Shemochal al Kvoido, and Kvoido Mochul. A Melech is not allowed to forgive, yet to waver off his COVID. So now he sees the Talmud Chochem, right? What's going to do? You're not allowed to stand, stand up from your chair because you admire someone. So what did he say? He said, Rabbi Avi and Moiri. I believe those Talmud Chachomim are like my father and like my Rebbe. And my father and my Rebbe, the father and the Rebbe of the Melech, are the only people the Melech is allowed to be submissive to. Get that? So Mimele says, no, for me they are like my fathers. They are like my Rebbe's. Mimele, from them, towards them, vis-a-vis -vis them, I'm allowed to basically lower my COVID, yeah, Moichel my COVID, and show them Mamish touch covered of kissing and hugging and there was no there was Yoishofat. Now, Nish Balhora Yomir, yeah, he makes a shvua to Lahora means not to do bad, to refrain from something. Is Nish but not to do whatever. Yomir, he does not change it, he keeps to Shvua. Kerbiochanon, that seems to follow that the good example for that is Obiochanon. Dom Obiochanon says Obiochanon. What was the story of Rabbi Yechonon? Rabbi Yechonon was invited often to dine by the Nosi. He was in Eretz Israel. Yeah, he would have to dine by the descendants of Rabbi Gamliel, his children, whatever, but by the house of Rabbi Gamliel. He didn't have kayak. He didn't want. He didn't want to have a whole dining session with the with the president, with the Nosi. I call it president. <laughs> yeah, with the head guy, and or he didn't want to have matono at kerekach. 
He didn't want to enjoy other people's food. So what did he do? He said, you know, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Nosi. I can't dine with you today. Can't have lunch because I'm the tiniest. I accepted upon myself to be tiniest until I reach my house. Now, tiniest until you reach your house is not so simple, Allah Hikli. Tiniest has to be an entire day or at least half a day. Tiniest for two, three hours is not really called tiniest. Uh, but, uh, however, Rabbi Yochanan, he didn't want to lie. He didn't want to be obnoxious and say, I don't eat for you. But he didn't want to eat. So what did he do? Like you have this, uh, you always have this conflict when you're invited, but people were not so from, right? So what did he say? I'm sorry, I'm a tiny, I'm a diet. Yeah, <laughs> that would be today. I'm on a diet. So what would he say? I'm a tiny. I accept and promise myself tiny until I come home. Even though halachically it's not mamish tiny, but because he said I'll be tiny until I come home, he kept to it. Yeah, between the time he was barbelling a meal until he would reach home would be two, three, four hours. He could be starving, hungry, and he kept to the tiny to that shvua. Even though it's not a real Shavuos Tainis, because he was super honest about it. Baruch Hashem. Weiter. What's the Maila of not giving ribis? Obviously, you're not allowed to give ribis. Remember, we learned that towards the end of Izzu uh, that even ribis given to a goy, there's a mile and not to give ribis, not to not give, <laughs> not to lend, <laughs> and then receive ribis from the goy, receive from the goy borrower. Mackenzie, oh, we're gonna miss him, right? We're gonna miss Mackenzie. Mackenzie is asking me for a loan with interest. It's better if I don't lend Mackenzie the loan by ribis. Why? Because I'm gonna develop appetite for easy money, and next time instead of Mackenzie, my next client will be McCohen. So that's why it's better. I'm not saying it's usher, but there's an issue. It's some kind of preference. Definitely Mila, as we saw there, and we'll see here, one second, that to lend to even to a guy with ribis is not exactly, we're not hot about that too. Okay, Viter. V'shoichad al-noki lo'ilokach. Yeah, he did not take shoichad. Now, noki here does not mean to hurt the noki, which sounds to be pshat. Even if the shaykh the bribe seems to be kosher bribe, so to speak, he doesn't take it. What kosher bribe? Listen to this. Okay, what's the story of Bishmal Babiyosi? In Ksubis, there's a whole bunch of stories there about Ribis. Bishmal Babiyosi had an oris. You know what's an oris, right? Uh, yeah, sharecropper. And the oris, every Friday, would bring him a, book, uh, a basket full of fruit. That was part of the business. It wasn't a gift. You have to, right? In other words, they work with as what we call today percentage, right? He gets percentage, and the balabais, he was a balabais. So Shmuel Babiyasi was the owner. He's supposed to get X amount or X percentage from the worker every Friday. One sunny Thursday. Oh, today's Thursday. One Thursday came to Oris a little bit too early, and he said, Oh, to them giving it to you earlier than usual. Start enjoying the fruit now, even before Friday. So that piqued the interest of Shmuel Babiyasi, and he said, Farvus. Why giving to him earlier? Because I have a din tire against someone, and you'll be the dying. It's not really shaykhat, because I was giving. I was going to give it to you anyways, and anyhow you deserve it. And am I? I'm giving to you earlier, so remember who likes you, right? So basically, what did Oshmuel Babiyasi do? He obviously did accept it, but he removed himself from being a dying. He basically passed the buck and let other dayonim, other dayonim, say, "I'm not dealing with it." I'm already in the Gabadovor because I received the fruit. Therefore, I give other based in, a different based in, the honor of dealing with my olives. Listen to this. The Gemara said that as the din was taking place, he was not in the based in, he didn't officiate as a dayan, but in his mind, he kept thinking all the time, all the possible svaras, all the logical ideas to <laughs> defend the oris. And he said, look at the power of shoichad. Yeah, this is shoichad which I deserve. Yeah, and I'm not even a Dayan, and I told him off and everything. And still, the Negiyah is so strong. Negiyah is very, very strong. Tipach Rucham, he says, yeah, how bad it is for those who really take Shoichad, how blind they are, they cannot begin to have, uh, to, to really, they completely lost their sense of judgment. Now, Ksiv Mazel Tov, anybody who does all 11 things, he follows those 11 Concepts, mitzvahs, good middos, all these, those who does them will never fall, will never collapse. 
כשהוי רבן גמליאל מגיע למקרה הזה, הוי רבייכה, רבן גמליאל would read this פוסק, when he would reach this פוסק in his learning, to start crying. And he אומר, he said, man de ovid lo lakulu hu de lo imoit, when you do all them, then you don't fall. אחד de מינה יו אימוית, let's say you fail on one of those, and the other ones you do great. It, does that mean complete fall, destruction, גהנם לא אוילם ועד, that's it? Is that all or nothing? Because he's saying, call Eile. If you keep to all those, yeah? The Masha, by the way, when I add something else, which I forgot to say before, how can it be Mekayim all the Lota say in the world? What do you mean to be Mekayim? This is Nogea to here. What do you mean? All 613, many of them are Lota say, right? How you Mekayim and Lota say? We said yesterday, right? Were you ever, I'm not asking you for confessions, yeah? Were you ever in a real Nistoyan not to eat blood? And he said, oh, no, thank you, McKinley. I'm not going to have the blood. <laughs> and he really had this internal fight. And he said, oh, I can't do this to Kodesh Baruch to my children. I will not drink the blood. Obviously not. Whoever offered you blood in your life. Yeah? Did you ever have any sign not to uh, get married with a behemoth? No. Many, many things are not in a radar. Right? Not No cash on. Sayyid Mikhail 613. Marrying a man, marrying a chvesnish sister-in-law, people, some people never thought of that. Right? So Mimela is known as Sayyid. Right? So Mimele is saying the same thing. You're telling me that I have to, let's say a guy has never came to one of those. Yeah, that's a 613. So we're giving you 11. Those 11 is, are something, are things that people, most of us would meet throughout our lives, right? Taking taking shochet, by the way, is not only a dying. If you're asking the shochet, those for them, it's not true. We're about to face, we're about to face the Yomim Neroim. And when we say kapas shoichad, even if you're not in base din or any powerful position, you should know there's a lot of shoichad bedvolim. Let's say a person is the rosh. So there are two people who are as bad. And one of them you like and one of them you don't like. Why? Because this one is nicer to you and the other one is not nicer to you. And that's a very, very hard, it, it's, it's a hard one. Yeah. In other words, we have a lot of emotional shoichad. Yeah. We tend to look at people not objectively if they're good or bad. Are they good to me? You can have a guy who's a real skunk, a real Rosho, and you like him. Why do you like him? Because he's good to your ego, because he knows how to tell you the right compliment every time. And that's a hard one. And then you treat him better than the other Rosho, or to Tzadikim, or to Benanim. That's Shoichad, my friends. Maybe not Shoichad or Raisa, but it's a concept of Shoichad. So now Rabban Gamliel is asking and crying, do I have to keep to all 11 concepts? What about if you fail with one of them? I'm not super, super yosher with the business, only a 90%, but everything else I do good. Am I that? Am I doomed for life? Says the Gemara, no. Says the Gemara, no. Amulei, they told him, they told him Gamil to comfort him. They said, <clears throat> it doesn't say the one who does all of them. Very good. Oisa'ele means the one who does them, who commits them, who performs them, even one of them. In English, not all of them, but any of them. Even if you stick very hard. Of course, you have to keep all the mitzvahs you can. Even if any of those 11 is your, your thing, is your trip, your entry to entry ticket to Shaman, even any of those 11 is good enough. Dilote Mahachi, because if you don't explain the post that way, I'll prove the point. There's another postage that says, When the postage talks about Arias, about all the forbidden relations, it says, Don't be nitma, don't defile yourself with all those. But your logic, Are you telling me that the Torah is telling me, Don't be nitma with all of them? In other words, you're not only, it's only a problem if you have relations with your mother and your mother in law and your sister in law and a man and a beast and an either, only then it's a problem. <laughs> but if you have relations with 10 of them, it's okay. Obviously not. Elamai must be Elala Be'achas Mikoleila. Obviously, if you tome with one of those terrible Isura Arayas, that's very enough. Here too, even if you excel in one of those 11, these are 11 potential. It's better if you keep all those 11 concepts of Emes, Yosher, Vitzadik, and all that. But even if you keep very strictly to any of them, that already gives you a chelik loyla mabo. That's good to hear before Rosh Hashanah. Bye, Shayao. Since we have Yerida Sadoros, after David came, Yishayao, Yishayao Anavi. And what did Yishayao say? He made them even smaller. He constricted and limited the, the concepts to only six. 
the midan al sheish dichtiv. It says, what are the six things that get you to olam The six concepts. Holech tzdokos v'doiver meishorim. I'm going to translate later. Moes bebetza, yeah. Meashokos, moes bebetza meashokos. I think it's one. No er kap of mitmoich b'shochad. He removes his hands. What? Uh, if you want. No er kap of mitmoich b'shochad. Oitem oz nemishma adomim. Everything will be explained, I promise. First wide line. That's the first one of Yishayo. Yishayo again, living the generation after David. He says, listen, we are too small. We are so, so small. We're so oni. We're poor. We have to keep, we have less demands from us. Yeah, from a Kodesh Boko. What's the one? Who's the one who did Tzedoko? Kidati v'lmanesher Yitzave. And it says, Hashem says, I know that Avraham Avinu will command his children. What? Avraham Avinu was the man, man who did tzdoko, charity, tzdoko, and mishpat. He's the one who knew how to judge and also knew how to be generous and give tzdoko. The one who speaks straight, the one who talks in a good manner, he speaks in a straight, honest way. The one who does not insult his friend in public. He speaks in a just way, in a, does not insult his friend. Not that in person it's good, but definitely, not to be malbin ponim, barabim, not to put him to shame, embarrass him publicly. The one who despises, rejects any kind of oishek, any kind of theft or shoichad. Ben Elisha is a similar story to the one before, but different. Abishmael ben Elisha was a Kohen, and also a Dayan, very nice. Now Abishmael ben Elisha, a guy came to him all of a sudden out of the blue, and gave him Reishi Sagez, one of the 24 Matonos is Reishi Sagez. If you have five sheep and you share them, you give the shorn, uh, uh, what should we call it, the wool, one sixtieth of the wool, you give to the Kohen. And Abishmael ben Elisha, here's a knock on his door, a guy who never, ever, he never, ever saw in his life, Abishmael ben Elisha, he's wool for you, because you're a coin. Abishmael ben Elisha, you know, his antennas were, you know, already at work, and he was asking, aren't there many koyhani between where you live and where I live? Why did you choose me? I'm so flattered. He didn't say I'm so flattered. Yeah? So he said, because I have a dintayim. And really, it's not shaykhad, because you're a coin and I'm a giver. That's natural. I'll give you the thing. But I have a dintayim. Remember me. Remember me. So, obviously, he, again, the same thing happened exactly. He basically passed on the Dayanus to other people. Other people officiated the din and not him. And even then, his thoughts were pro that wool giver. So, Bishmal ben Elisha, yeah, there was Mois Bebetza, even a little bit of Betza. Betza, by the way, can also be Shoychad, you know? Betza is, is Shoychad. Yeah, he despises Shoychad to no end. That's what Bishmal ben Elisha. Noyer kap of mitmoich b'shoichad. That's another level of shoichad. There are two levels here. The Marsha explains the difference, and honestly, I did not understand. But there are two levels of shoichad here. The one who's noyer kap of the one who removes his kapai. I think I know. Uh, yeah, mitmoich b'shoichad from supporting any kind of bribe. Kigon or bishmal bar biyosi. Bishmal bar biyosi. We said already. He is the one who had the oris, the sharecropper, who gave him the tvu a bit earlier. I think a Bishmal Bar Yossi is a higher level. Because a Bishmal Bar Yossi, the one with the wool and a chenami, there are 5,000 Koyanim around. Why are you giving it to me? It's quite obvious. You go all the way from your house to my house, you know, 10 kilometers away. You came from Katsurin to Yerushalayim to give me the, the wool. It really, excuse my language, stinks. It's not nice. It's clear. That's boarding on real Shoychad. But Shainken, Noyer Kapov means he removes his hand from any Shoychad at a higher level of rejecting Shoychad. Why? That's who? That's Abishmal Babi Yossi. Abishmal Babi Yossi, that's my sharecropper. He mm, 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 owes it to me. He really owes me that money. It's only a change of one day. Instead of giving it to you on Friday, give me on Thursday, it's very, who cares, Thursday, Friday, who says I'm going to have a Paris for Thursday night supper? And still, it's a little bit of a need nude of Shaykhad, even to that level, yeah, then that, um, um, did not want to accept. Item Oizle Mishma Domim, yeah, the one who blocks his ears from listening to Domim. Domim either means something as bad as spilling blood, sometimes to hear bad things is as if you spill the blood, 
Erdomim often means doimem, which means you don't listen to, we'll see to what, you don't listen to the bad information and with, what's domem? Doimem dmomo, chol dmomo daka ishoma, v'nesanet oikef, silence. You don't remain silent when somebody insults the, the who, says the Gemara, de l'shoma b'zilusa de tzuva mirabonon v'shosik. Which means, yeah, a person listens to people talking against Talmud HaChomim and he keeps quiet. It's a very, very bad thing. And the one who never does that, meaning he does not allow people to besmirch Talmud HaChomim and he keeps quiet, meaning if he hears people talking against Talmud HaChomim, then what does he do? He rebukes them. He stops them. That is a big mila. And you should know, to talk against Talmud HaChomim is a very harsh thing, is a very uh, severe thing, very grave thing, and unfortunately, people in today's generation are not aware of it, and it's very, very bad. What's the story of Oblezo Baal B'Shimen? Oblezo Baal B'Shimen, we all saw that in Baba Metziah, I can't say I remember all the details, but Oblezo Baal B'Shimen, HaChomim claimed that he was a moisel, that he was a snitch. So he said, listen, when, I'm gonna, when I will die, he told his wife, don't bury me, they won't bury me nicely. So basically, he went to some kind of like coma, like a near-death, post-death ex uh, experience, some kind of thing in the attic between 18 and 22 years, yeah? And then he still communicated with his wife. His wife would visit him. Like, you go to our menuchas to visit your mother? So no, so he, she would go to the, to the attic, you know? Top floor was the dead section. And it was like half dead, have a life over there. They still communicated somehow. And he and one day, she saw that he has a worm, a worm, coming out of his ear. That was like, she freaked out, what's going on? So he told her, I don't know exactly how he managed to convey the message, yeah, that what? That it's a punishment because I heard the bizarre of Talmud Chacham they kept quiet. Meaning, usually a blessed Baal B'Shimen would never keep quiet if he would hear somebody saying, you know, that rabbi in the radio sounds so stupid. How can this rabbi, I'm saying the word on purpose, yeah? Why is this rabbi speaking? It's terrible. I hear people saying it. It's a very, very, very bad thing. Even if you think this rabbi said something which is not right, because you hear it from the secular media usually, which is the problems of its own, and they say the rabbi so-and-so said so-and-so about the army, it's very, very bad. Never say bad things about rabbis. It's a very severe thing. And if you do, it's bad news. Because of Elizabeth Shimon was always so careful not to to keep silence while listening to bad news about the Melchah Chomim, well, there was one time when he did, then he had the worm coming out. I, why was it after his death? Because that's when the judge did about it. We expect more of you. You never talk about Chachomim or even listen, and now you did. So the worm comes out of your ear in the attic of your house. So that's it. Finally, the person who closes his eyes from looking at anything bad, one second, he does not look at women when they stand over the laundry. Laundry, we know, is not a washing machine, right? Yeah, what is laundry back then? Where? In the river. In the river. As much as they try, they can't really keep tzenu. And anyhow, it's a women's only zone. All, all women are there. The women are there. They would all do the kvisa one day. It would take an entire day, actually. All the women get together, the river, the bend, this and that. So you see their feet, you see here, and uh, don't claim that they should be Tsanua. You shouldn't be there. What are you doing there to begin with? Elamai says the Gemara, Lake Dark Achrina happens to be the dead day. I have to go from the doctor to the coil, and I happen to go through the Kvisa. So then you have to close your eyes, says the Mashal, literally. Sometimes you can just turn your head. But when it's like so visible, you know everyone by the river, you push it, have to close your eyes. And if you do that, it's a big sahar. You have to guard your eyes. A very, very, very big Nisoya nowadays. Okay, what do you want to say? The, the, the Zion. Let's continue. Okay, what does it say about the person who has this six stars life? Not five stars, six stars. He does all that during his lifetime. So what does it say about that? Wow, the one who keeps all these six concepts will live after 120. He will live high, high up in Meroimim, right next to Hashem in the Meroim. He would live there. It's worth it. Bo Micha comes a later generation. Micha is ready from the Trey Osser from later. Micha said, no, there are only three concepts that you have to keep, yeah, in order to be your and go to the 
and merit the world to come. What's good? And what does Hashem want from you? Three things. Mishpat, Chesed, and Hatsne Aleches. What does it mean? Tzniyas. What does Tzniyas mean? We're going to see soon. Aislash Mishpat ze Adin. To have Din, in other words, in your life, even if you're not a Dayan, even if you happen not to be a Dayan, you have to have Din in your life. Be honest. Have have Din. Have, have order. Have which money belongs to who, which loan do I have to return, what do I have to do when. Din is a lifestyle. Din doesn't mean harsh judgment, like we say in English. Din means to put everything in place. You have to have an orderly lifestyle. Din means X belongs to X and Y to Y. Abbas Chesed, Zegmilus Chasadim. Needless to say, Gmilus Chasadim. Rabbi Neonah says, Gmilus Chasadim is a tremendous, very important mitzvah. That's Neleches. What's at Neleches? Zeot Soy Samesh Vachnosas Kala. Very interesting. At Neleches is what? To go to Levaya and go and do Achnosas Kala. Give Tzdoko to the Kala and be Mesamech the Kala. Why does it say Leches? Rashi says here something very nice. He says, the Rivan, he says, Leches, Leches Toiv, Leches Toiv Leches, it's better to walk to go to the Beisa Ovel than to go to Beisa Mishter. Yeah? The word Leches, going, refers in the Novi, in the Ksuvim, to Leches to the Chasana or Leches to go to the mourner's house. And that's why Atzner Leches is Davka relating to Atzas Meis, to helping financially or emotionally to go to the Vaya or to the Chasana. But what does Atzner Leches have to do with that? Explains the Gemara. Atzner Leches means Tzniyas. What does Tzniyas have to do with that? Explains the Gemara. V'alotvam kal v'chomer. It's kal v'chomer. Umadvam she'endar kan l'asoses betzina. Those two things are very public. What are the most public affairs in the world? The chasana. Everyone goes to the chasana. A big thing. Big mu- a lot of music. And what's the other thing? Yeah. Burial. Uh, Leviah. You know, there are uh, loudspeakers all over the neighborhood. Those things are done publicly. And yet, Omra Torah had snail leches. The Torah says, if you help the kala, be tzanu about it. Don't tell the whole world, I supported that kala. Or I supported that mason. I'm involved in the mitzvah. Keep it low profile, even though it's something that's a public story, still, it's in the news and the limelight. Stay, if you helped, you're the one who arranged the wedding, you want to arrange the whole thing, don't say to people, keep it low. If so, things that should be done with Sina, all the more so, you should keep them Tzanua. Tzdoko, regular Tzdoko. People don't want to know the Bichlal received Tzdoko. Don't tell people, I gave Tzdoko to Chaim uh, Shmulki. To whoever, to Hamyanko, don't say it. Don't don't mention. It's a shame for him and doesn't get you anywhere good. You do mitzvahs, do them quietly. Wow. You read this adorous. Every time we have less and less concepts to follow. Yishayal came v'midanalshtayim. Only two concepts. Shenema, koma Hashem, so says Hashem. Shimru, mishpat ve'asu, tzdoko. All you need is mishpat and tzdoko. <laughs> Which one is gone? Sneers. Expect people to do things quietly. Again, don't get us wrong. In other words, of course, it's good to keep all 11, yeah, or all six, or all three, but we expect less. In other words, that's today's generation. You can hope for the best, but expect the minimum. Expect, you know, whatever is uh, below the below, below standard. And here, too, you can't expect people to be tzano about what they do. Everything's advertised, so at least do mishpat and tzdoko. Ba amois v'midon al achas. Wow. Amma said there's one concept, one idea in the Torah, you have to keep that, and you get your Olam Abba. Shnei Ma'ar, Koyim Ma'ar Shem Lebeis Yisrael, Diyoshuni V'chiyu, Seek me, Doresh, Ask for me, Try and be close to Hashem, and you will live. Lidrosh, to want, to seek. Maskev L'Ram Nachum Maritzchak, that's not so little. Who says it's just one thing? Ema Diyoshuni B'cholot Torah Kula. Maybe seek me through 613 mitzvahs. You're not telling me one specific thing. The other one said, do tzdoko, do mishpat, go to the chasana quietly, or donate to the kala quietly. You're telling me something so general, get close to Hashem, honestly, getting close to Hashem may mean through 613. So you didn't minimize anything. It's so general, it can already be multiplied by 613. Ela, ba chavoku came, and he, and that's a famous, famous line, chavoku basically minimized them all on, into one concept. Yeah, he made it, yeah, he turned it all, he gelled everything into one concept. Shenema, 
the tzaddik ve'emunoso yichye. The emuna is the basis for everything. The basis for a tzaddik's life is emuna. Masha says it's krishma. When you say krishma, you have emuna. Krishma is impo- extremely important mitzvah. And again, it doesn't mean that you just have emuna and that's it, and you can eat chazir and uh, do nevelos. Obviously not. You try the best. You try to keep and perform and follow taryag. Ah, you can't do all taryag. Make sure at least the most important part of Torah, which is Amuna, Amuna and Hashem, Amuna is the basis for Kola Torah Kula, make sure you have that. If your Amuna is strong, that would also lead you to other things, other good things. Amuna is the name of the game. That's the basis for everything. If you have strong Amuna, it will, one way or the other, will lead you to Olam Yeah? It's nice. I just like to comment, and obviously not criticizing our brethren who are to know Kishinishbu. Yeah, and I, uh, whatever, I know some of them very well. Unfortunately, and sadly, when you talk to irreligious people in Israel and you get to talk to them about Ashkofo, challenging them about what makes you Jewish, what you live for, so they will tell you that it says in the Bible, Ish each man can live by his own belief, which they mean is the statement that justifies pluralism. Each man can live his own belief. It's okay to be Buddhist, to be Muslim, to be LG Mamba Papi, whatever, all these things. It's okay. And it says in the Bible, don't you know? Well, obviously, we see here that they're wrong, sadly so, and we should tell them, we should nicely and respectfully explain to them. It doesn't say Ish it said Sadiq. <laughs> yes, but the difference is Sadiq, a Sadiq lives by his belief. The belief is in Hashem. And it's a novice saying, It's Sadiq, you want to be a Sadiq to reach high? Live by the Amuna in Hashem. It's true, Amuna Soi, there are different ways to get to Amuna. That's true. But the Amuna has to be Amuna by Hashem. Yeah? And who's the one who believes in Hashem and lives by that and grants uh, and he gets his Chelik and Elam above? That's a tzaddik. This is just a, yeah, a practical advice next time you talk to someone from the other side. And may we all do Teshuvah, us, them, everybody. Weiter. Shkoyev, thank you, Baruch. Now, um, now let's start a little bit. New, uh, now, whole new line. Omer Rabbi Yosef Barchanina. Abba Gzeres Goza Moshe Rabbeinu Lisoel. There are four decrees that Moshe Rabbeinu were going there and called Lisoel. Bal Arbo Nevim. Four different Nevim came later. The Bitlum and they canceled the Gzera. You can't change the Torah. But if Moshe Rabbeinu, the Gzera means like bad decree, like punishment, like something harsh. The Moshe said to Cloud Israel, and then Vim later, again, what's the concept? It's a weak generation. We see it with our children, we see it with ourselves, right? As long yet yeah, the yeah, the 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 longer we live, you know, as we go down history, further on and on, generations get weaker and weaker. And then Avim basically canceled out the bad uh, zeros of Moshe Rabbeinu, number one. Moshe Omar, the Ishkan is all betach badad ain Yaakov. Basically. Moshe Rabbeinu set a very, very high standard to Klal Yisrael, and then he said, you know when Bnei Yisrael would live securely and safely, which we all want, if you're like, if you're like Yaakov Avinu, if we are like Yaakov Avinu, or at least aspire very, very hard to be like Yaakov, then we'll be safe and secure here, and the swords of iron will be over, and the Chatufim will be back, just be like Yaakov Avinu. Ba'amoy subitla. Amos, much later, came and said, no, it's too much for us to try and be like Yaakov Avinu. Shenema chadalna mi Yaakov Yaakov. Stop that demand of being like Yaakov. Uksiv nichem Hashem alzois. Hashem regretted that. Obviously, Hashem never regrets. Hashem doesn't change his mind, but Hashem works with what he has. <laughs> yeah? Originally, Hashem said, hey, you guys, you 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 live with, the, with the Moshe Ben and Aaron Akon in the Midma. I want you to be like Yaakov Avinu. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw, oh, these are special uh, cases here. These are people who can't manage, uh, you know, they have a uh, attention span of five seconds. I can't expect them to be like Yaakov Avinu. Lower the bar, lower the expectations. Yeah, we see it for the children. Now, Moshe Omar, number two. When you go to Golos, you will never be ragua. You'll never be calm. You'll never find rest amongst the Goim. You go to America, you go to Canada, you go to Mexico, you'll never find peace over there. By Omar, Yirmiya came and actually softened it. Sometimes you have Oga, you have periods of, of calm, of peace and tranquility in Golos, like America today, it's all tranquil. Moshe Omar, Moshe says, Oh, 
the, 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 son, the father's sin and the children suffer. If they keep to the mice of the fathers, they get double punishment for themselves and the father. By Cheskel Ubitla, Kemi Cheskel said no more. The generation is too weak for that. And Ephesachoites, he Thomas, the sinner dies by himself. No, and the children of the sinner are not at all affected by what he did. That's a very big Kiddush. One second. Moshe Omar, the Avadet and Bagoim, you'll get lost by the nations. Get lost, Lechor means what? Either getting lost or getting cut off. Like Ibud, like, like you'll, you'll die, you'll be finished, perished. In other words, we'll get lost and found. <laughs> lost doesn't mean you'll get lost and finished. Lost and found. Those who are lost in Eretz Ashur and Eretz Mitzrayim, and Idochim in Eretz Mitzrayim, those who got lost in America and England, in South Africa and Australia, they got lost, spiritually speaking. They will come back to Eretz Israel. They'll come back to Eretz Israel. Very, very nice. Uh, one more, what, what, one second. Uh, um, Omarav, one, one more. Omarav says, I'm stopping the micro. I'm scared when I read this posuk. It says, You'll get lost amongst the goyim. Lost means, and will never return. How do you know? Some things get lost and they get found. In other words, you, lo you, you get lost. You're born to irreligious people. You're born to people who have no idea what to turn mitzvahs is. And you come back, and it's beautiful. You get lost, and you and Hashem finds you. Somebody taps on your shoulder in the kotel. You see, oived, I'm lost like a lost sheep, and yet bakish Eventually, I'm found. El I, I. There's another problem. It says That sounds harsher. The land of your enemies will eat you up. You'll be eaten, finished. So there will no no more Jewish nation, Holocaust, Inquisition, everything, Tachvatat. They will eat you up. When a person eats uh, cucumbers and uh, gherkins, he doesn't eat all of them, only some of them. Maybe not good for the stomach. So too, some of the Jewish people will be lost and some won't be lost. Okay? Thank you very much. See you on Sunday. Sunday we'll have a shorter shear. And then Rav Hollander will start. Uh, please buy your Maseches Shavuos, because we're going to have changing of the guard most probably on Sunday. Thank you very, very much. Tears are welling up my eyes. Sunday, same time, same place. Please bring two Gemaros, Makos and Shavuos. Atzloch of Rocha, Rabbi Shlomo Hollander. He's a very, very good Megachir, and may we all be Matzliach. And I'm saying this online too. He will be also on YouTube. Atzlocha. And thank you to people on Tarani Time YouTube all over the world. Thank you.